Hello, David here, and the project for today is an oil change on a 2018 Toyota RAV4. It's got a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine, and this is non-hybrid. It's just an all-gas motor. This is my first time with the RAV4. I just had a Ford Contour that died, so I'm pretty new to this myself. Follow along as I fumble my way through this. Hit the latch release for the hood and the cabin, and then Wet your fingers under here to get a little clearance. And there's a lever. Lever is right there at the center line. Slide it to the left. Lift up. Find the prop rod. It's right here on this connector on the uh, cooling tank. Prop rod goes right in this slot. Let's loosen the oil filler cap. That helps the oil drain more quickly. Notice most oil filler caps always put the required viscosity of oil. Never deviate from that. This is 0 W-20. There's the oil drain right there. Focus on that. I'm finding that I could do this work without jacking the car up, but I'm going to jack the car up just so I could get the camera in here for you. And the oil filter housing is right, right there. And also this is my first time, so I want to have a good look at what I'm doing. The spot at the front center is a recommended area for yeah, jacking up the car. Right in there. Jack stands are right on the pinch welds where it's recommended by the factory to jack up the car if you ever had a road hazard. Right there. Always change oil with a warmed up engine that allows the contaminants to flow out with the oil more freely. And also after you jack up the car in the jack stands, always bump it with your hips to make sure it doesn't fall. Just a safety consideration. You're going to see two oil pans. You want the one on the passenger side. I'm trying to grab that crush washer. Looks like it's stuck to the pan. I'll get it later. Position your pan so you don't miss it. There we go. That's dirty stuff. I'll let it run out till it stops dripping. You got time, what do you care? The good thing about jacking the car up from the front, the plug is on the rear end of the pan, so that facilitates draining more oil out of the pan. That's a good thing. While the oil's draining, let's take a look at the filter. That's the part number. 04152-YZZA1. It's got complete instructions on the box. Notice the O-ring does not go against the lip. The O-ring goes in a groove right below the threads. Also, you don't have to torque it down real tight. It's the O-ring. The compression of the O-ring in, in the bore is what seals the oil. So, complete instructions. Even has a pictogram. Uh, this is one of those uh, cartridge type of filters. Kind of like your remember GM cars from the 1950s. You had to take the uh, the container off and then take the filter element out. So this is what you get in the kit. You get this drain piece. Two O-rings and the filter element. This crush washer does not come in the kit. You have to buy it separately. Go back to the directions. The factory wants you to remove this drain plug at the bottom of the cartridge case and then some oil will drip out and then you stick this thing up in there and more oil will drain out and after that drains out then you put a wrench on the housing and remove it. Remove the housing rather. Uh, since the housing is made out of plastic I don't recommend using a um, a socket wrench to do that. I think you're going to ruin the housing eventually. And here's what I have. 
I have this Benzoil oil filter wrench number 19906 for Toyota and Lexus. Made in Communist China. But this is made out of steel. Don't buy a plastic one. Make sure it's steel. This'll this will fit around the housing and remove the housing without damaging the housing. It also has the flats around here to, to grab the flats of the housing. So it grabs the flats of the housing and it also connects with the splines that are on the housing too. There's three here, three on that side. That'll give you a, a firm purchase on that, that housing to remove it. Do it the way you want, but this is the way uh, I would do it. Also, I happen to know that the uh, the dealers aren't draining it. They keep this cap in there forever, and all they do is they just remove the housing with their uh, with their housing wrench, and then they drain the oil from the housing. So, in my mind, that's optional. I had to get a pick underneath that washer to get that off of the oil pan. You might have the same trouble, but these are not reusable. Tighten the drain plug to 30 foot-pounds. Don't forget that new crush washer. And this oil housing tool, that's a one-half inch drive. Ooh, that's on tight. I just cracked the ribs on the oil filter housing. This might be a bad day. Well, I finally got it to turn, but to keep the wrench from slipping off, I used my floor jack to put a little bit of pressure on the tool so it wouldn't slip off of the housing. What a hassle. I'm going to get a clean rag and clean out in there. There's the old filter. That's what it looks like on the inside. Never had a clean oil change. Every oil change is like the Exxon Valdez. So I have to decide what I'm going to do. Normally I would replace this thing. And I think I'm going to replace it on the next oil change. I'm going to use this housing because there's still a hex area around here which this wrench fits onto. I'm going to use that. The torque value is 18 foot-pounds. So it's not torqued down really tight. It really uses this O-ring to to do the sealing. So maybe the last person got crazy and uh, torqued it down too tight. Let's get this old O-ring off. Clean the grooves good. Okay, new O-ring. Try to get it out without twisting it. Just pull straight out. If you ever get an O-ring twisted without puncturing it, just get your pick in it. Run it around like that. That'll straighten every O-ring. Put some oil on it. Doesn't need much. It's in film. New filter. Put a little bit of oil in there. Just so on start up it won't be oil starved. I'm using a 21 millimeter socket to grab the outside of this nut rather than the half inch drive. I just thought it might be a stronger uh, fit when I was removing it, but I'll continue using the 21 millimeter socket. And 18 foot pounds to tighten. No more. Okay, using Mobile One Zero W20 takes four point six quarts. Now 
Don't forget to update your maintenance log. This is my first operation on this car. Yeah, yesterday I checked the air filters. They were okay. So uh, this book looks familiar. This is the same book I used on the 98 Ford Contour. I just tore those pages out. But it's important to keep a maintenance log. Next thing you want to do is start it up and make sure the low oil light goes off in a few seconds. If it doesn't, it stays on too long. Shut it down and see what the problem is. It's never happened to me, but once the oil light goes off quickly, run outside and get underneath with a flashlight to see if there's any oil leaking. Okay, no oil lights. Next step is to jack up the car, pull out the jack stands, and then set the car down level. Wait 20 minutes and check the oil level. Make sure that it's uh, within the two dots on the dipstick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the maintenance minder and then it'll go off again in 5,000 miles or six months. So I want to uh, turn on the ignition without starting the motor. I'll light up the instrument panel. Okay, I'm going to go here and toggle till I get to maintenance. I'm going to be moving this switch. Watch over there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to push the center button for vehicle settings. I'm going to push the center button to reset the schedule maintenance. Oh, doggone it, it timed out. Try it again. Schedule maintenance. Reset data. Up button. And yes, data has been reset. It's no longer going to be bothering me to take it to the dealer for an oil change. Check that oil level. Coming up about three quarters of the way up. I think that's good enough. I want to thank you guys and gals for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more great videos from the new Toyota RAV4 owner, David GPO.